which is Lisa B. This is Why Raven over here. Today's Monday, so happy Magic Monday to all of you guys. How are you, witches? How was your weekend? My weekend was pretty good. I'm feeling much better. Thank you very much for all your support and all the well wishes my way from last weekend video. Also want to say thank you very much to everybody that has been going to my website and really pretty much taking all the tiny uh, tarot. That tiny tarot is so freaking beautiful. Thank you so very much for all of you guys that have been purchasing the tiny tarot. And thank you so much for the awesome welcome that you guys gave to my black salt. And that salt is indeed 100% for real infused with silver. Many years ago, maybe like two years ago, I did a video on how I did my silver infused black salt. And many of you guys asked me, why Raven, what did you get silver? The truth of the matter is that I work with jewelers. So I was lucky enough to get some powdered silver to add in to my black salt. And since then, I've been looking for the right way to put real silver into my black salt. And I finally did it. I am very proud of this salt. Uh, it is real silver. This is not sparkle. This is not mica. This is real silver in your salt, which is... And this black salt is intended for you to get rid not only of evil spirits and evil influences, but when you believe on interdimensional creatures, I know I do, uh, you can also utilize this salt to keep these intruders at bay, keep them away from you. I don't know, there's a lot of people out there that sometimes is tormented and visited and terrorized by creatures like this. So there you go. This is a great way for you to keep these Nile intruders at bay and far away from you. If you're new to this channel, my name is White Raven and I am here every Monday teaching you how to be a witch from my perspective, okay? Uh, the map of the world is different for everybody, so if you stumble upon my video based on the title, I welcome you and I truly hope you stick around. I invite you to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get my videos every week. You will learn a thing or two. Which is, today we're going to talk about candles. This was not the video intended for today, but for whatever reason, this week I got a lot of questions about candle burning, about candle magic, about interpreting thought and different things on candles, especially the seven day candles. And there is a hundred videos out there, maybe a million videos out there on how to interpret sot in your encased candles. But you know what? I wanted to add a little bit more into this video that I'm gonna show in here today. I want to also include logic. And I'm gonna tell you what things could damage the results of your reading if you're doing candle magic, especially if you're doing a seven day candle, or what things can influence your result in a bad way. What things can actually damage the results of your candles? That takes me to, I'm, I don't think I've done a lot of giveaways in my channel. And I did this candle some time ago, like probably like a year ago. And it says, marry me. It's a marry me candle. It says marry me in the bottom. It's made by me. And I'm going to be giving away this candle. So stick around and stay to the end of the video because I'm going to tell you what you have to do in order to win this candle. There's only one. So there's going to be only one winner of this candle, which takes me to, I have a lot of products hanging around, prototypes that I've done for my magic. So I'm going to start giving them away, especially some of the stuff that I make when I make my videos that I still leave in my room, this witchy room. So I'm going to be giving away some stuff. So stick around. I think I need to give to you all the happiness that you guys give to me. This is a way for me to share with you how much I appreciate you. So there's gonna be more giveaways. So for today, if you want this Marry Me candle, uh, Valentine's Day is around the corner. I think it's a great time for you to work on your magic for your significant other to finally propose. So stick around. I'm going to be sharing with you how to win this candle at the end of the video. I warn you, which is this video may be a little bit longer than usual, but what we're going to talk about is really important. Because if you are a solitary witch like me, there are certain things that you just look around for answers. Okay, so we're going to talk about today about candle magic, how to read results, and what things can your candle tell you when you're doing spells with candles. And also, I wanna share with you things that can affect the results in your reading, things that can give you the wrong reading 
on a candle. When we are working with candles, okay, and I'm going to talk today about freestanding candles and in case seven day candles or any type of encased candles that you are going to be using. The most important thing that you need to realize is that for that candle to give you a specific and precise reading, you have to have this candle in a controlled environment. And I'm going to explain what I mean with this. When you are doing a seven day candle, for example, not only you have to make sure that number one, you have to practice safety. You have to be extremely safe because witches, candles have a mind of their own. And right now, nowadays, uh, there's a few things that we're doing to our candles that are making our candles a little bit dangerous. But let's start with your environment. When you are burning candles, you got to practice safety, which means you have to be attending that candle every single time that candle is being lit, that candle is burning. Another thing that you have to take into consideration is that you want to do a candle in a specific place and leave it there. Don't be moving your candle from here to there and everywhere because different spots in your house, for example, are going to have different type of drafts. You're going to have things in the environment, and I'm going to tell you what I mean with this, and they may be particles in the environment that are going to affect the way you candle burn. Let me give you an example. Many years ago when I lived in Puerto Rico, I used to have a beauty salon. In the back of my beauty salon, I used to have some of my magical tools, and I used to burn some candles in the back of my beauty salon. However, my beauty salon was an enclosed place and I was constantly using hair products like hairspray and gels and sprays that I used to spritz all the time in my beauty salon. Therefore, my candles always get me such black soot. Is it fair for me to say that I was having black magic work against me? Or is it fair for me to say that my candle was burning pollution in the air that was consuming? You have to be very smart when you're burning your candle. Please make sure that the room where you're burning your candle is free of drafts and is also free of any particles that can affect the burning of your fire. Another thing that you have to take into consideration, which is, is the quality of your candles. So a lot of the candles that we find out there are mass produced and chances are one of those candles, hopefully you don't get one like that, is not going to be built properly. Therefore, it's not going to burn properly. You're also going to find some other candles, especially like in Michael's or any kind of craft place, that they sell decorative candles. Those candles are not going to give you any type of wax and they're going to burn and close. This candle that you see over here is an enclosed candle, which means that this candle is going to tunnel in. She's going to burn only inside because this is a decorative candle and it's intended to burn that way. Therefore, that candle is not going to give you much and it's not going to tell you much. That doesn't mean you cannot work with a decorative candle, but please understand that those candles are going to burn in a tunnel. Now, let's talk about one of my pet peeves right now. You have in Etsy, you have in a lot of websites, you have in a lot of Instagram, candles that are loaded with ingredients. They're pretty much, it's funny because Matt Oren was saying the other day that they pretty much look like an ice cream cone. They are filled with herbs, with crystals, with things, with pieces of metal that they put inside that candle. That is such a pretty candle, but such a no-no when you are working magic with. Because not only that candle becomes an extremely flammable piece of candle, but it's also not going to give you a right message if you burn it. You have to be extremely careful, which is with all the ingredients that we put in in candles. When you are doing candle magic, by all means, I invite you to put drops of oils, maybe some sprinkle of some herbs, but please make sure that you do not overdo it because all this is not only extremely flammable, but it's going to give you the wrong life to your candle and the wrong message. Other things that can cause your candle to give you the wrong readings and even explode is going to be the wick. If the candle is mass-produced, 
like most of the candles that we find in botanicas, chances are that one of those candles is going to be defective. And when I talk about the candle being defective, it could possibly have two wicks, or that wick is way too close to the glass. That can give you a candle that is not only dangerous, but it can explode on you, giving you the wrong message. <laughs> so having said that, I'm going to talk to you about pyromancy. Pyromancy is going to be the ability, the art, the science of reading the fire in your candle. This fire is not only going to give you some messages, but it's also going to give you some warnings when the candle is not burning right. So let's start with the fire. Number one, let's talk about the size of your wick. Very important, which is when you receive candles, like if you receive this candle from me, this wick is very long. So I invite you and I exhort you to make sure that you cut this wick and you make sure that this wick is at least a quarter of an inch long. This is way too long, okay, witches? So when you receive this candle, you must cut this wick. If you receive a candle and you immediately light it up and you don't trim the wick, you're going to have a very high flame, which is any flame that is taller than half an inch is a flame that is going to give you a lot of soot and is going to burn the candle either too fast or wrong. Therefore, it's going to give you the wrong messages. So when you get your candle, make sure that you trim the wick to at least one quarter of an inch. Number two, you want your flame even and steady. Once you get a flame that is even and steady, the message that you're getting is that your spell is working properly. There is no obstacles in the way. This is something that is going to work for you beautifully. That is the best type of flame that you want to have burning in your candle. Number three, a very tall flame. If you did your due diligence and you trim your wick, but your candle flame is still extremely tall, what this candle is telling you is that the emotions are way too high. And those emotions are affecting the way in which your spell is taking place. Make sure to regroup, analyze what you're doing, and light your candle again. Otherwise, that tall flame is going to become a fire hazard and is going to create a lot of sod and it may even give you the wrong message. High flames represent high emotions, very strong emotions. Please make sure you regroup and you light your candle again. If on the opposite, your candle is burning even and steady and everything looks beautifully and suddenly your flame burns really high, chances are any spirits that you're working with are telling you we're here to assist you. So that's a really good sign. Number three, your candle flame is way too weak. The first thing that you have to check is that your wick is not too small. If your wick happens to be too small, smaller than a quarter inch, then clean around and start again. Just make sure that your wick has enough space to burn. If your wick is perfectly fine and your candle is just simply burning extremely low, there's a few things that this could be telling you. Number one, there's not enough punch in your intentions. You're not sure of what you want, or you simply don't have enough strength in what you're visualizing. Or number two, there's no clear intentions. For example, you want a job, but you're not looking for a job. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that if you're doing candle magic, your intentions are clear and you have enough strength to carry on what you want. Number four, your candle is burning way too slow. In order for you to know if your candle is burning slow or slow, you have to be burning candles consistently for you to know this one burns normal, this one burns fast, this one burns really slow. But if you think your candle is burning really slow, chances are again, which is that your spell is going to be taking longer than usual. Maybe you need to regroup and add more magic to this one spell. Maybe this spell needs some help. Think about that when you see that your candle is burning really slow. Number five, your candle suddenly goes out. 
the first thing that you need to check, which is, is if you have drafts in your room. Is there any drafts in your room that could possibly have shut that candle? Number two, maybe somebody else shut it for you because you left it unattended and your husband came and shut it up because say, oh my God, this crazy witch of mine is leaving candles lit all over the house. Maybe somebody else should snuff it for you. So make sure that that is already checked. If you already checked that and this is your candle in front of your eyes, the candle just turn off. This is a very important message. The universe may be telling you this is not the right thing to do. And this is something that really does happen. And when you experience something like this and you light your candle again, and again, your candle snuffs off by itself, you need to stop and you need to regroup and you really need to analyze if you should be doing the magic that you're doing for that particular problem. Maybe this is not what you should be doing at the moment. Number six, something that I have seen many times, your flame drowns. It drowns in the in the wax. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you in my particular experience is happening with my candle. When my candle drowns, it's because my wick is super tiny. Okay, especially in candles that I don't use for magic. I just light them up when I'm doing the video, like the candles that you see back here, I don't use them for magic. And sometimes they drown and I don't check their wicks. I don't attend their wicks. And sometimes they do drown in the wax. If to the contrary, your wicks is fine and this candle should be working, but it still drowns, chances are you're overwhelmed and your intentions behind that spell are just as drowned. So you need to regroup witches. There's a lot of things that the fire is going to tell you to guide you through the things that you should be doing. If you light a candle and you completely overwhelm with emotions, with feelings, make sure that you're clear on what you're doing. Because not only that, sometimes when we're feeling this way, we create the wrong spells altogether. So make sure that if you see that, the universe is telling you which regroup rethink, back up, and redo. Number seven, the wigs disappear. The most obvious reason for your wig to disappear is a faulty candle. They did not put the wig all the way through. But if in the opposite, the wig suddenly disappears, chances are you're playing with magic and the universe is telling you that this is not for you. Stay back. Number eight, something catches fire. If you are doing a spell with candles and it catches on fire, there's a few things that are happening. Number one, your candle is extremely dressed. You put you bought a candle with way too many herbs, way too much oil, way too many powders, way too many things, and eventually this candle is going to catch on fire. Please make sure, I cannot stress you enough, how careful you have to be with candles. Do not overdress your candles, especially if they are in case. Everything is going to stay there until everything catches on fire, which is be smart. This is not a way for you to play with fire. If to the opposite, you're burning your candles and one of those candles just catches on fire and there's no reason for that candle to catch on fire in such way, the universe is giving you a very big message. It's either going to be good or going to be bad. Now, the thing with candles magic is, which is the map of the world is different from everybody. And when we're doing candle magic, we need to use our instinct our intuition, and we have to apply that intuition into the message that we get for the candle. So each one of you is going to get a different message. I can tell you over here, things that, different things that happen to your candle could mean, but at the end of the day, only you know your circumstances. If you are using your intuition, if you are intuitively going to interpret these candles, please make sure that you are ready for the message that you're going to get. Because I've seen that a lot of witches want to use their intuition and they start doing candle magic. And when they see a result that really scare them, they run for the hills. Let's make sure that we are using magic and doing spells for whatever reason. When you get messages, you do not run for the hills when they cry wolf. You have to face the consequences or you have to face the message that the universe is telling you while that candle is burning. And you have to, hands on witches, you have to solve the task at hand. Number nine, nuts on wicks. Nuts on wicks are carbon building in the wick. 
As the candle is burning, it builds some carbon and it's going to create nuts in your candles. If that is something that you notice and you realize that that's what you see, make sure you trim your wick and you light again. If these nuts keep happening, then there's a message behind it. Things are going to be too tied up in your life. What is a nut? What does a nut represent? It's a big tied up in your life. It's a big conflict in your life. It's too many obstacles in your life. So nuts are things that you need to pay attention to. Again, if you cut your wick, if you clean it up and it's still happening, then you really need to regroup and see what are the obstacles in your life that are not letting you go through with this spell. And maybe you want to address those obstacles individually. Also, not symbolizes self-doubt. You don't feel like you are strong enough to do the magic that you're doing. Now, let's talk about something that I found really beautiful. And I gotta tell you the truth, this does not happen a lot, but talking flames. I mean, you can go right now into Walmart, into Target, you can go into Yankee Candles and buy those little candles that have the popping flame and they are beautiful. I just love listening to those little wigs that are always popping. But unless I get a candle that has a wig that is specifically for that, it's very rare for me to hear candles popping. Unless you put a lot of herbs in those candles. A lot of herbs sometimes pop when they burn, which is another reason why you need to pay attention to your candle switches. But there's different poppings that you're going to receive from your candle. If you have just murmury, very soft poppings, that is a message of reassurance, of love, of, of like, we are here with you and we are helping you out. It's always a good message when your candles pop very gently, very soothing and very softly. If to the contrary, the popping is a little bit higher and more like a medium type of noise, watch out because they should be some important messages from your guides that they're trying to communicate with you. So when we are burning a candle and we start hearing medium sound pops, pay attention, close your eyes and try to listen and try to see with your third eye what is the message that your guides are trying to tell you. If again, and now the poppings are extremely loud and almost violent, like tiny little explosions, that that pertains a lot to the magic that you're making. If you're doing some kind of relationship magic, this is representing arguments, discussions, yelling at each other, bickering. So use your intellect, use your intuition and try to figure out if your candle is annihilating all these issues or if this is something that is telling you what is to come. Number 11, flickering flames. A lot of people always get scared of flickering flames. I don't know why they always think it's Satan coming out of the fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. But flickering flames is a good message, believe it or not, which is it's positive, it's encouragement, it's guidance, it's telling you we're working on it, we're here with you. So please don't be so afraid of flickering flames. A lot of people think flickering flames is a bad thing. It's really, really not. Now, is the flickering of your flame is really erratic? Chances are what's coming ahead is kind of like tipsy-turvy and you have to be prepared for it. Number 12, double flames. I have never in my entire life have seen a double flame in a candle. If that does happen, either the wick split and there's two flames burning or it's just simply separation, which is just simply separation. Number 13, color flames. You have to, number one, analyze. Do you put something in your candle that may give you a specific color flame? I mean, there are things that we can put in candle that can change the color of your flame, okay, to blue and to different colors. If to the opposite, you put nothing in your candle and your candle is giving you color flames, then analyze and the meaning of the color. That is the message that you are receiving. 14, your flame just won't go out. It doesn't matter, you go like this, it just won't go out. It's very stubborn flame. It's very simple, you're not done with the spell, which is you gotta repeat. If you have a seven day candle and you're trying to extinguish your, can your candle or your flame is all the way to the bottom, just keep on burning, you need to keep on going. It's very important that you redo until there's no more. Number 15, which is the last thing that I'm gonna tell you, which is flames bending. So it's really important that if you see flames bending, uh, if you are, for example, doing a work 
with two candles, like a man and a female, if they're bending towards each other, or this one is bending towards the girl, the girl is bending towards the guy, then that's pretty much telling you who is <laughs> going towards who. Okay, so that should be a message for you to know a little bit about that, the dynamic and the relationships, okay? I'm going to piggyback on that now on the next part of this video, and I'm going to tell you what to do with your candle when they're feet standing. Over here, I have a metal plate in which I like to burn my candles. So I'm gonna show you some candles that I like to burn. If it's not an encased candle like this one, so you get the little candles that I burn all the time in my videos. Candles like this one, which are the ones that I like to inscribe, and then I burn it over here and I put it in the plate, just like so. You have bigger candles like this one, which is, you have decorative candles like this ones. We also have like this pretty one that I made the other day of a skull. You have different candles that are standing free, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the freestanding candles. Many of these freestanding candles are going to give you no wax because nowadays there's many candles, again, that I make to give you absolutely no dripping whatsoever. I personally like my candles to give me a dripping. I like to see the wax in the plate because I find it really interesting to read all that wax that is left in my plate. Now, if the candle does not give you any wax, there's nothing left at the end of your burning, then everything's good. The spell is done. You're done. You're ready to move on. And the universe heard you and you're good to go, which is, that is something to celebrate. But when you put your candle in a plate like this, either in a candle holder, or you burn the bottom of the candle and you attach it, you ground it to the plate, this is what I'm going to suggest to you. Please make sure that you divide your plate in a quadrant. If you want, you don't have to. Because many times when the candle is melting, it's going to melt maybe to the right side of the plate, to the bottom side of the plate, to the top part of the plate. And if you divide your plate in quadrants, meaning like in four pieces, and in every quadrant, you put a specific request, maybe you get some clearer messages. Let's say you're going to put four people in that quadrant, and you want to work these four pieces People together and maybe that candle is going to melt and burn all that wax towards one person in specific that's going to give you a clearer message you don't have to do this but it's just a suggestion and that I'm giving you but these are some of the things that you can experience when you're burning a freestanding candle we already talked about the candle burning completely clean and that's great you, your spell is done you're good to go but if in the opposite you get a lot of candle wax in the plate you can see which weight of the plate that candle went. Is it more towards one side of the plate than the other? If you divide your plate into different quadrants, maybe that can give you a message. Otherwise, please make sure you try to interpret the meaning of the whole mess of wax that that candle left you behind. Try to interpret intuitively what is that trying to tell you. What do you see in there? Do you see shapes of people? What are the different shapes that that is giving you? And based on your intuition, you're going to get messages from that wax. Another reason for you to get way too much wax melted in your plane is because your spell is weak. You need to focus in what you're doing or you're not clear with your intentions. Again, you want a race but you don't ask for a race. So maybe that's what you need to do before you actually light a candle again and you repeat your spell. Wax pillars. How many times, witches, have you burned a candle and the candle burns all the way down and leaves behind these little pillars on the side? What do those pillars mean? They're actually giving you a message. Those are blockages that are still standing. Those are things that are facing you, that even though you did this spell, they're still facing you and they're not going anywhere. So you have to either repeat your spell until your candle burns clean, or you have to approach this situation with different magic. Your candle falls. I'm going to tell you this, which is, if your candle falls, make sure that you attach that candle properly to wherever it is that is burning. So you ground this candle properly. If your candle keeps falling, it is time for you to stop. Because the universe is asking you, 
Are you justified in what you're doing? Is this is the right thing for you to really do? We're telling you right now, don't do it. So you need to stop, regroup, and see what it is that the universe is telling you. Maybe we're acting too hasty. Maybe we're not thinking things through. Please make sure that if your candle falls, you think about what you're doing before performing it again. What happened with your candles tunnel? I already talked to you about candles tunneling, like this one. And this is happening because it's that decorative candle. But what if it's not a decorative candle? What if it's a candle like this and it's tunneling? Well, there's a few things that could happen when the candle is tunneling. Number one, that the wick is too small. Maybe you bought this candle in Etsy, you bought it from somebody else, and they put a very small wick for the candle. And it's not going to consume all the fuel that is the wax around it. So that's one of the reasons why your candle could be tunneling. Otherwise, witches, there are big walls between you and what you want, and you really have to work that hard, very hard and very consistently. You know, which is a couple of months ago, we did a video on skull candles. So when you're burning a skull candle, for example, or you're burning a figure candle, like a person's candle, please make sure that you see what part of that candle is burning. If I'm working on a skull candle and it's burning towards the mouth and a lot of wax is going towards the mouth and I'm actually working on this person to shut up because this person is slandering me, well, this candle is giving me a message. If the wax is falling towards the eyes, what is that telling you? I already shared with you, for example, in that uh, skull candle video, what every single part of the skull represents if we're talking about the brain. So please make sure that when you're burning a specific shape candle, especially if it's a person or whatever it is, make sure that you analyze what that wax is going, how that candle is burning. Because it could be one of two things, that the universe is giving you a message and some kind of confirmation about your spell or the wick on that candle is very poorly placed. So please make sure that you check for that. Now let's talk about seven day candles. That's what everybody wants to know what's up with the seven day candles. What do they mean? Which is there are great books out there that are going to tell you a little bit or they're going to give you a little bit of light on what does all this remnant means when you burn candles. Madame Patmita has a really good book about candle magic. I'm going to link that book in the description of the video. And also, you know, this little booklet over here that I'm going to show you right now, I really love all these books. I have them all. This is Hoodoo Candle Magic, and it's going to tell you a lot about the different meanings of remnants in your candles. Again, when you are doing candle magic, everything is going to be extremely intuitive, especially if you you are like me that you're a solitary witch you have to use your intuition which is and use your active thinking be proactive when you think and analyze if you're burning a skull candle what's up with this candle but if we're burning a pillar candle like an encased candle like this one what's going to happen it's very simple which is there's not a lot of complication to that this candle is either going to burn all the way through and clean leaving no remnants behind or it's going to leave some type of remnants behind and we're going to talk about it the scariest thing for you to find in a seven day candle like this one is black and soot all the way down where you encounter that, you have to keep on working that magic until that candle comes out clean. So if you have to buy another candle, you buy another candle and you burn it again. And you keep on burning this until it comes out clean. Now, if the candle is giving you so much resistance and there's a lot of soot in this candle, not only burn the candle again until it comes out clean, but make sure you assist that magic with doing cleansing bath for you, protection magic for you, reversal magic. Make sure you accompany that spell, that candle with more magic because this candle is working really hard for you. If to the contrary you see soot just in the top of the candle and then starts burning clean, then the candle is doing its work. Be happy and rejoice. The candle work. Now, if you put a lot of ingredients inside that candle, when the candle reached the bottom, it's probably going to burn. Even if it's burning clean, when it reached the bottom and it burns all the remnants of all the herbs that you put in there, and it may just give you a lot of soots. Just make sure you're very careful with the amount of ingredients that you put in a seven-day candle like this one because it can actually burn hard. One of the experiences that I have had with candles like this one is that they exploded. 
okay, they can explode, especially if this wick is too close to the glass, they will explode. Uh, a lot of people put these candles inside like pots, for example, with water, and sometimes the difference between the uh, temperature could make this candle explode. Now, if this candle does explode, it's going to mean, number one, either somebody's really working you, and you're having some really strong opposition, or if you're doing some kind of separation, banishing, distancing kind of spell, if this candle actually explodes, you're done. The cords have been cut. You're done with that person. Another thing that it could happen, and that's in the mundane world, is that the wick is too close to the glass. If you do this, if you leave this in a place that is really cold, maybe when you turn it, when you light this back up, it could shadow the glass. But anyways, if you have that happening to you, those are a few of the reasons that you should consider if this candle shatters on you. Another thing that you can see inside your candle is white smoke. Uh, so that means that when the candle burn, it's going to look like it has like a white film. If you touch in a sign and it's white smoke, rejoice, your spell is done, you're good to go, you have angels and guides and spirits guiding you and taking care of you. If in the opposite, if it's not white smoke, it's actually wax all around your candle, uh, that's a lot of deceiving, that's a lot of things that you're not seeing, that is, that is the candle telling you, hey white raven, hey witch, there's things that you're not seeing. Somebody is lying to you. Somebody is occulting something from you. And that is something that you need to take into consideration. When you also burn a seven-day candle, you need to see any symbols or any figures that may appear in your candle. Pay attention to that. The idea of your seven-day candle, which is, is for it to burn clean all the way through. And if it doesn't burn clean all the way through, make sure that in the top is maybe not so clean, but when it reaches the bottom, your candle is consumed and is completely done. Another thing that you can find in your seven-day can your seven-day candle is smears of wax. Make sure you read the smears because they could be obstacles in front of you depending on how high and tall they are, the bigger they are. And these are things that you need to understand that you have to tackle before your spell comes into fruition. Last and again, the most important thing which is, is that this candle burns all the way through. Make sure that you look at your candle if it's too dark, which is, you're going to feel it. This is something that is irrefutable. You look at it and you know it's is bad and you know you have to repeat and when you look at it these candles are going to talk to you if you have wax in the sides make sure to try to interpret the message or the figures that you see otherwise those are obstacles in front of you that you need to tackle before anything goes further Listen, witches, I know this was a long video. I There's so much that I want to teach you guys. Please let me know if you want me to go deeper in any of these topics. I'll be more than happy to do the research for you and share with you all this information. Now, to the giveaway. It's very important that if you want this candle, is the Marry Me candle. It's a candle for having that significant other finally ask the question is for you to get married. If you want this candle, which is, you got to send me an email to layerofthewitch at yahoo.com. You know my email. And make sure you have a screenshot of you being subscribed to my YouTube channel, to my Instagram, to my Facebook, and to my Pinterest. It's really important. And the question is this. Which was the first video in which I say at the end, stay wicked? You're going to find it. You know how to do it. And you know what? I know I'm doing this a little bit hard, but I don't want this candle to go to the first person that goes into my videos. Some of you guys have been following me for many, many, many years, and maybe one of you guys really deserves this candle. So please make sure you tell me which video was the first video in which I finished with Stay Wicked. I will be giving the results of this giveaway next Monday with you guys. I'm going to put everything in a little baggie and I'm going to pull out the name of the winner. Thank you so very much for watching this video all the way through. Please remember to visit my website, whiteraven and witcheslayer.com. I have a lot of awesome things for you to check out. See if you like them. Remember, I'm in Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Stay very smart, witches. But above all, you must stay so very wicked. Bye.